The following presentation was recorded live in Los Angeles, California for the 24th Annual Convention of the International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is Tape 11, Body Flow Smoothness. Uh, I'm John Sobolski. To my right is Gloria Roth from Nova Scotia. Over there playing Dorman is Mike Jacobs from suburban Washington, D.C. Uh, I'd like to start by giving you a little context for what led to this and what we're going to do today, and then we'll take off. Last year, about a dozen people got together. You take one, but I haven't handed them out yet. Um, actually, if somebody would grab these and hand them around, I'd appreciate it. Last, thank you, Rich. Check. Thank you. So, last year, about a dozen pe people got together uh, to try to talk about what makes good body flow and to try to make explicit things that people have sort of done for a number of years so that they were actually out and spoken about and we could talk about them. Uh, this session is an outgrowth of that. Part of what we're going to do is a quick instruction session on the physics of body flow, which Gloria will do. Then the three of us will present and discuss some of the ideas that came out of last year's discussion group. Some of those will be obvious things, some of them will be surprising. And then we will proceed into looking at some common call sequences, some of which flow well, some of which don't. We'll look at why they don't. But what we're looking to do is give you some tools for thinking about what would make good body flow, what would make bad body flow, and what to avoid, rather than saying, don't call star through your left, but we'll talk about why it may be good or bad. Uh, after that, uh, if we have any time, then discussion questions, and maybe we can make even more progress forward. With that, if uh, could get Gloria started, thank you. I think all of you have your uh, the papers. This is the paper that I presented last year, uh, and I'm going to read it and go over it with you. The part that's in handwriting on the very first page. Uh, we talk about this convention being a new beginning, and we'd like to think that this session is a new beginning in your way of looking at what constitutes smooth body flow and what is not so good and why it's not so good and sometimes just the eye-opener as to how the body actually works and what it wants to do will help you by after having been at this session at least we hope that's a new beginning for you and your thoughts about body flow I'm starting out on the first page there and you can follow along with me kinesiology is the study of the anatomical and mechanical basis of human motion in <laughs> I, I know I practice that all the time but I still can't say uh, of human motion in dance and in sports the word comes from kinetic energy which is the energy of a, a body that it has because of its motions now in, uh, the kinesiology chart that you have under there these are our basic human movements and I myself wrote in as you can see and then we had a photocopy it maybe he, did you do it over again no okay uh, but under square uh, under uh, fishing we have the push and the pull reeling in and archery we have the pulling uh, weightlifting we have the pulling and then also we have the pushing and the swimming we have yeah we have racing uh, the recreational swimming or synchronized swimming. Uh, baseball, tennis is under striking, ping pong, badminton, golf, croquet, even boxing has a form of striking. Throwing, we have football, basketball, shot put, baseball, and the casting part of fishing, of course. Then on, uh, in jumping, we have diving and track events, the trampoline and in gymnastics, certain gymnastics. And of course, we have track and marathon. And you could go on and add a whole lot more uh, different types of uh, body movements that we uh, have in each of these sports or in different sports, too. Beginning spills, skills in all sports and recreations are given to an individual. Now, think about that a minute. All the beginning skills in any sport and all of our recreations are given to one individual. Square dancing is the only human movement activity whose basic and continuing movements must be taught in conjunction with others, and I mean other people. There will always be a minimum of one other person up to a maximum of seven other people. You turn back 
and each person's part of a grand square are the only square dance basics done by one person that I could come up with anyway. This sets the square dance activity apart from all other human movements. In addition, the square dance activity is the only activity that because of its music has a predetermined constant velocity or speed and direction, which we call tempo of the music in conjunction with the defined movement and the timing of each basic. From the very first lesson in square dancing, unlike every other learned human skill in sports and recreation, the tempo is predetermined by the music. Our square dance music is a steady pulsating 126 to 132 beats per minute BPMs. This means that dancers in motion dim, should match their dance steps to each of these 126 to 130 beats per minute, taking 126 to 132 glides, slides, steps per minute. The faster the beats, the da, you notice I, I'm a very good typist there. The faster the beats, the shorter the steps. The slower the beats, the longer the steps. New callers need to be taught, number one, what a beat is. And don't laugh. There are people who do not know what a beat of music is. And you have to use music to demonstrate that. Number two, how to recognize the beat in a variety of records our patter records as opposed to our singing call records, etc. How to count beats and why. How to teach dancers in motion to slide, glide, shuffle on each beat. How to develop the dancer's body motion so as to correctly dance maneuvers in the prescribed number of beats so as to be ready for a smooth transition from one maneuver to another without stopping. And six, how to plan kinesiologically sound choreography. Now, we have to go to Isaac Newton's, law, Newton's laws of motion to understand how our body works. Because of the special characteristics of the square dance activity, it is well to acquaint ourselves with these three laws of motion. The first law is the body uh, at rest, which is called inertia. The second law is acceleration. And the third law is action and reaction. Law one, which is inertia. Newton's first law states in the first part that a body at rest will remain at rest until forced to move. This seems pretty obvious for our everyday experiences. An example would be dancing standing still, just squared up in a static square. The second part of the law is not so evident. It states that a body will continue to move in a straight line with constant speed if no external force acts on it, such as gravity, air resistance, or in square dancing, it might be another dancer, the design of the call, and, or the combination of calls. I might even add, it might be the speed of the floor, whether the floor is slippery or whether we're dancing on carpet. Law two is acceleration. The second law of Newton's states that whenever two bodies come in contact with each other, they exert the same force on each other, but in opposite directions. Expressing this for square dancers, we use the word momentum. Momentum is the body's resistance to change its direction or its speed velocity. Our square dance music determines the speed, but the definitions either accelerate or decelerate the direction. Law three is action and reaction. In this third law of action and reaction, it is stated that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Common examples would be the hurdle step of a fancy diver that depresses the diving board and the resulting upward thrust that gives the diver the height needed to execute a dive, or depressing of the trampoline to gain upward thrust to do a baroni or a flip. In square dancing, when dancers come in contact with each other, they should exert, I should have the word should probably in there, the same amount of pressure on each other, but in opposite directions. Besides the action and reaction of human bodies, we must also take into consideration the floor as it exerts equal upward pressure as the dancer's weight presses down on it. The floor may be slow, too sticky, friction too much, fast, too slippery, not enough friction, three, just right, perfect for sliding, gliding. The last factor in action and reaction is the size the mass, bones, and muscles, and so forth. Most men have more body mass. You know I only put most men because of the way I'm built. Most men have more body mass than women. Therefore, callers must teach men to exert equal pressure when in contact with other dancers, particularly women dancers. A postscript to action and reaction is the consideration of the nature of each call or combination of calls. Now we come to the center of gravity. A person's center of gravity is crucial to the balance of the body as it dances.
It is the point at which all the body's mass seem to be concentrated in relation to the downward pull of the Earth's gravity. For example, when a dancer is standing in a static square, the center of gravity is a straight line from the head to the toe. As the dancer turns slightly to bow to your partner, one foot is extended and plantar or pointed, flexed. The center of gravity has shifted to the leg bearing the weight of the body while the pointed toe bears no weight. The center of gravity in square dancing is constantly changing and is very important. The human skeletal system has, system has several important functions, as we know. One, I'll list them down, to protect vital organs within the body, to support soft tissues, to serve as the factory for making red blood cells, to serve as a reservoir for minerals, to provide the attachments for the skeletal muscles, to act as a system of machines to receive muscle torque, which is turning or rotary force. Kinesiologists are particularly concerned with the last two. In this regard, we come to the axis of rotation and the plane of motion. There are many definitions for the term axis, but what the one we would use is simply, and you notice that mine, anyway, didn't get photocopied good. I hope his did. Is it a straight line around which the body rotates? All right. Uh, I looked for, and we used to have, when I was a kid, well, they used to have those, uh, uh, like a puppet type situation where you, a string would go through a little doll, you know, and you could jiggle the doll up around and it would spin around. That would be your um, center of gravity or, or your uh, longitudinal axis. If one were to punch a small a pen a pencil through the center of a piece of cardboard, the pencil would be the axis or the body around which the cardboard would rotate. The cardboard represents the plane of motion. The axis and plane of motion are always at 90 degrees to each other. And then you on your own can look at this in your new beginning of understanding how the body moves. You can look at these axis and the uh, frontal plane and so on. When the total body is doing a twisting movement around an axis running from head to foot and in conjunction with other moving bodies as in square dancing, the body will twist or swing one way only as far as the outside force, the skeletal cyst structure, will allow it and then will want to twist or swing back to its original or further state, which is the opposite, an equal reaction. And this is called its range of motion. Certain square dance basics are used over and over again, but are, in are inherently poor kinesiologically. Square through is perhaps the best example of a poor call inherently bad. This doesn't mean we should drop it as a basic, but it does mean that the callers understanding this will be more patient with dancers who turn the wrong way on a square through in the first few weeks of class. Underneath here is an analysis of a square through. Time will not allow for all the references to Newton's laws of motions as we go through this, but introducing ourselves to an analysis. Every caller who has taught classes knows that teaching square through finds some dancers turning the wrong way. From standard couples, women may tend to turn to their right after the first right hand pull by. This is noted less frequently than men turning drastically to their left. I think maybe at this point we should have um, four people out there for this, could we, John? Could we have four people out here? There's one. There you go, Jerry, step in there. Here we go. All right. Um, when women pull by, uh, well, on the first part, if they're in a standard couple, when they pull by with the right hand, if they let their body do it at once, as they pull by, their body should, would turn slightly to the right. Now, understand it's the first hand of the square through. All right. So, and their body mass is less than the men's. So they haven't built up a whole lot of momentum as they move. But give a right hand pull by and ex ex notice how if they did it correctly, their body, see how Jerry's has turned so that her left hand is right there. But because it's only one hand pull by and they haven't built up a whole lot of men momentum, we rarely have women turning the wrong way once they, you know, after the first night of understanding the concept of a square through. Okay, do your turn. Oh, go back off, excuse me, because we have to have some uh, velocity on this. Uh, when the man, you know, I used to think that the reason men after even three or four weeks had trouble with square through, uh, that it was because I did a right and left through first and that action when they pull by with the right and then the left is the same as the left hand of a right and left through. So for years I was teaching uh, the right and left through first and then I began to be honest with myself that men were still having trouble so I had to analyze it in the way that I did when I taught gymnastics and, you know, trampolining and diving stuff in the same way and that's why I got so terribly interested in the kinesiological flow of things. Uh, give a right hand pull by, do two hand pull by. Now let your body do what it really should do if you pull by left. No, not yours. All right, pull by left. And his body really should be facing out there like that. 
like his is right there, that gentleman there. That's the way his body should go if it was flowing smoothly. Now counteract it and turn in. Give another right hand, pull by. Pull by left really quickly. Pull by left. We'll turn in, pull by left. Now, see, <laughs> he's very good at this, isn't he? No, but there, you have the idea now that those, that is the reason why, for instance, on square two, now, if you know this, and this is a fact, you can take it from me because I'm in my 50th year of calling and I have taught every year, sometimes three classes in one year uh, since I started. And I know that if you will go out on the floor in a break and talk to the man who is going to do this continually in a class, you will be able to say to him, someday you're going to be a beautiful dancer because that's probably the only man on your square dance floor in class that flows properly the way his body wants to flow, which is real dancing. All right. So if you tell him that, say you're going to have a little trouble because you must be a very good dancer or going to be because that is the natural way your body wants to go. And you'll find just that you singling him out without doing it over the microphone uh, will help him. And so knowing that about the body flow of this particular move, now there, that's where we're going to get into. So thank you to uh, four, I should say. Uh, when you read the rest of that, you can see everything that has to be seen there. If you turn one more page, the conclusion, the future, as kinesiology, kinesiology as a study is expanded with a study of biomechanics, biomechanics, a study wherein the knowledge and methods of mechanics are applied to the whole structure and function of the human system. Instruments and computers will be used in diverse disciplines that include biology, physiology, medicine, mechanical physics. Engineers, design, engineers, designers, physical therapists, oral and orthopedic surgeons, cardiologists, aerospace engineers will make practical applications. Videographers and electromyographers will evaluate pictures such as the ones below. Now, the, the little exercise down below just means that those pictures are not in any particular order, and you're supposed to be able to figure out from watching them which are a man cost, casting a fly, the golf swing, a sprinter from the starting block, and which is which. Now, and in the end, in square dancing, callers should understand the difference between good and bad kinesiology and its effect on fatigue, muscles, equilibrium, momentum, and a host of these other factors so as to plan pleasing choreography as well as create moves that are good for the body. Okay? The rest is yours. It's just a little glossary there. All right? That's that. You have your little booklets. You can take those home and look them over. John. Oh boy, no feedback. Good. Gloria led off the body flow session last year, and she was followed by each of the invitees giving a short discussion of some topic or another. The things that follow in the handout are more of the papers that people presented last year. Um, we're not going to follow them particularly. They're there for you to read and think about. Each of those papers was not intended as definitive or the final word on something, it was intended as a springboard for discussion. So they're given to you as a springboard for thought. Out of the discussion that followed the various presentations last year, we came up with some interesting things, one of which was a good way to do square through. I think you're the one who brought up the idea, Cal. If we could get two couples up again, same two couples, and yeah. And if if you would like the traveling mic, why don't you? Cal, no. Well, then you've been watching them, so. If well, this way, I get to see whether or not the theory works. Right. Uh, when we first learned how to dance, all of our dancing was done hands up, and the observation was that if we would have had enough sense when we invented square through to do it entirely hands up. Look at the difference of what happens if you use essentially this position to do a square through as opposed to the hands down position. Right. Just try and do a square through with the hands up. For the tape, that's sort Watch of what happens to your need. shoulders as they pass as you go around. Go ahead. Okay? And then come out. We unfortunately did not invent, or whoever invented the call did not do that. But the, the, there's another thing that goes on from the standpoint that when I dance right now, I sometimes wonder about my belly button about there. My belly button's down there. Because most of the time when I dance with people and I do a right and left grand, they're looking right here. Indicating his belly button. Yeah. 
indicating well above tape. my belly button. All right. Now, what is what is happening is that if you do a right lamp grant or a hand motion, where does your eye normally go? It goes to your hand. If hands were up then basically your hand travels naturally from your hand motion to the eye of the person coming to you and we would suddenly look at each other again all right let's go back and try one more and do it smoothly just square through four hands hands up hands up hands up one two three four and see how the motion to pull you out of the plane doesn't exist if your hands are up that you have the ability to be able to compensate in what Gloria was talking about much better. Now, Thank we had, you for letting we had me have one more addition into this, this whole chemistry here. Can you all face again? And that was Jim Mayo talking about that the actions of, of actually reaching and grasping in a shaking action actually caused a lot of our turning, plus it, it really caused these permanent body grips to occur with each other. So I would like you all to do the square through again, hands up. But this time, don't clench the hands. Don't lock the thumb around. Simply do it palm to palm. In other words, all your actions action is going to be your own body moving, not you moving someone else's body by yanking on it and pulling it by. So go ahead with your hands up, square through four, and slide the hands. Don't close the thumb. You will notice that all dancers move comfortably without any extra turning action. And they, don't, they no longer have this commitment caused by someone else's body weight having an effect on their own motion. I was going to ask whether folks who are out dancing had a reaction to how those felt. Did, which, which felt the best? Yeah. Jerry thinks the last felt the best. You're looking skeptical. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to the first because I've done it so much. Okay, so you, good. We'll get into that in a minute because that's a good point. You thought... I thought probably the last, but... There's something to be said for familiarity, isn't there? Yeah. By doing the last, I don't want to end up the wrong way. Interesting. Because it appeared to me like each one of them tried to go the wrong way with an answer. Yeah. It's been more fun. The most you ever want to try out? One more try at it. Well, why don't we switch? <laughs> it, it seemed more fun. More fun. I can't do it when you get it. Three right again. Hands up, no thumbs, square through four. Hands up, no thumbs, square through four. I see a lot more eye contact going on yes. between the dancers. Uh, there's... And there's absolutely no way to lock on to the other person. It, it, I noticed in the first time doing the square through with you, for instance, that there was the clenching action. It just clenched with the hands up as opposed to the shaking action. But removing the thumb from the action suddenly makes it impossible to get much more than just simply a small clasp which means you don't pull on the other dancer. Also, on the fourth hand, I don't feel as though I'm going way around. If, we, if we'll do it the standard way again, I'll show you what I mean. Just do it handshake. They're doing it in hand, handshake position. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jerry is facing out. She's the, a girl in this position in her last handhold. She was facing out. May I say that by not gripping, by doing, if you're going to adjust and use that up handhold, you are in relation to our kinesiology, you are eliminating the swinging of the shoulders around the axis, and that is the point kinesiologically that you have to identify. Okay. What made the. My name is Tim Morgan from Pleasant Hill, California. Um, what made the other one, the standard one, more easy for me, though, was the counter pull of the dancer. It's not yanking, but their feeling of their body helps me move into the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, for me, it does seem to swing a little smoother that way. I mean, she could weigh half of what she does. I wouldn't yank her and throw her over my shoulder, but the feeling of her weight, you know. But, but you see, that only works fu functionally well when the person that you're wor working with is of the same similar mass. And what may be then a comfortable action for you isn't comfortable for the other person that isn't of that mass. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a case of yanking. It's a case of, of that your action is, is comfortable feeling, but theirs may not be quite at the same comfort level. Okay, give me the microphone. Uh, yeah, there you go. Don't dancers typically use the weight of each other to balance and to find their inertia path? I don't know what the fancy language would be for it. 
but typically I know I do that even when even with uh, I'm doing uh, hands open or palms open type dance I dance with two communities I dance with a gay community I dance with a straight community straight dancers are very delicate a lot of them are very are a lot older and I have to be very careful with them and also not rotate their arms too far things like that the way I was with the gay dancers were incredibly physical uh, but either way I still look for the feeling of that body and its mass. You know, I, I, it's not that I'm looking for a uh, a heavy momentum. It just tells me. But, but the thing we found was most interesting when we did the initial timing charts for yeah. advanced dancing was that when we started it with, with one sex doing the initial pull-by of a split spur through, that we couldn't start it with the men. It threw off the timing chart because they yanked on each other. And, and we, when we tend to get males together on pull-by actions, there tends to be, it's not them reverting to type or anything, it is simply a matter that they do tug harder on each other. And because they are many times similar body mass, they are feel, feel freer to do that type of action, which then changed the timing of the call and how it was danced. So everything kind of reacts into each other. They all these minor little things, particularly what Gloria went through here, have major effects on each and every call. Which, when you then analyze that, takes us into how we teach and how dancers understand and learn. If you understand some of these as the problem, then that dancer on the floor that's having a problem is not stupid they're being led up the wrong path because of our actions with body flow. Um, actually, I'd like to, to keep the square through folks up here for a second. I'd like to do the hands up square through again, but now you're used to using the other person's body to help you turn and counterweight and make the direction changes that are inherent in square through. Okay. He said, in, instead, Try starting on your right foot, which is, you probably were starting on your left, but try starting on your right, and as you hit the corner, use your foot to turn you, and see if that changes the feel for you at all. It's another, it's instead of hands to change your direction, now it's a foot to change your direction. I already do that. Yeah, so why, try it and see what you think it feels like. It's going to feel weird, but, but see if you get the feel. For the ladies, it should be left foot, because you're going the other way. That's okay, go ahead and do the square through, hands up. Okay, so on the, the going into the third hand. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just using it to bring out some, some ideas. What foot to start off right. With. In fact, I saw at the beginning that, so I was looking for it. What foot do I start with? Use the mic, please. And, uh, Say, yeah. hello. And, uh, Back up and start over just for the, the tape. Okay, for you on the tape. Uh, my initial thing was they were telling me to start off with one foot versus another, and I was saying that in the very beginning of my square dancing, nobody ever said anything about what foot to start with? I even looked through our little pamphlets and it was a big mystery. What foot? Well, whatever one you want. Nobody thinks about that. So mm -hmm. I do whatever happens. I don't keep track of it because I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use this as a segue into the next idea that came out of this body flow session. The mic's going to be useful down there somewhere, which is the changes of direction require assistance of some kind. Uh, in swing through, you're using your arm to help you change direction. Um, and actually, and in this case, I was trying to use your foot to help you change direction. We'll see some other examples later. Um, would you step into a hands-up type ocean wave just for a second and do a swing through? Do it fairly quickly. Okay, can you describe the feel on your arm as you were making that turn? You want to do it again before you before you make the decision? And not you in particular, but anybody down there, if somebody can. Swing through again, just to, and then we'll get Jerry to, to talk. Which way were you pulling? Well, the first uh, time I was pulling with my right hand, and the second time pulling with my left hand. In which direction were you pulling? I was pulling toward me. Mm -hmm. And how easy was it to do that pulling? I didn't feel it was hard. Okay. Swing through again, quickly. And once more. <coughs> okay, so you're, you're pulling with your elbow bent, 
And this is a situation of mechanical disadvantage on that arm. Okay, shift now to the New England forearm style, not hand, handshake, not elbow, but kind of halfway up the forearm. No thumb. Any thumbs are not, but not, not around and grabbing. Okay, do a swing through from here. And one more quickly. And one more after that. Any comments on how that felt? Do you want... Okay, we have at least one guy here for whom that's not a normal thing. Oh, I just thought, just keep doing it. I, I prefer contact, so anything you talk about square dancing that reduces contact, I'm opposed to, and anything that increases contact, I'm in favor of, in general. Does anybody have any, anybody else have any comment about the feeling of this versus hands up? Well, I like this, but particularly on a swing through, what bothers me is when somebody doesn't counter dance and it's like just walking around on your own. Uh -huh. But this gets a good uh, feel. A good here, here, in some sense, he has no friction. choice but to, yeah. but to supply the counterweight for you. Oh, one thing, it doesn't apply maybe so much to body motion, but with the hands up, you can see where the fingernails and the rings are. <laughs> An interesting point. Uh, Rich, then Jerry. Uh, I felt there's more momentum, more swing to it. In other words, there's a stronger, stronger, a stronger feel for the turn each time, rather than letting your body, let you, letting your feet move your body and just touching hands and not relying so much on the grip or the arms or anything. So it was a case of more connection of you to the next person. Yes, but more arm movement than footwork, really. Okay, Rich had a comment, I think, and then the lady... Uh, yeah, I'm Rich uh, from Peggy. Hayward, California. Jerry here. I had to peek at your name. Um, one thing that I find in, when I do swing throughs with the hands up is there's all this talk about whether to oppose the thumb or not. Now, these two, we oppose the thumb, and I could get that grip. But with you, you seem to kind of protect your thumb, and I didn't know if I could, I could hold you. I could, I could really get that, <laughs> that swing... That, right, you don't want that. What, what you're doing is you're not allowing me to counter, or you're not. I don't know how to, to, to touch you in a way that can give me that counter. But at the same time, she's protecting her thumb. Correct. From somebody who would grab and not and not let go. Correct. It's a funny and. That's one of the the. the that's where. Lady on the end and then the gal in red. I think that's one advantage of the arm turn is. Uh, the thumb uh, quandary of whether to or not. Goes also, away. it seems like you get a more evenly distributed swing through rather than one heavy and one not. Okay, the, do you take the mic to the to the to the gal in red back there? Thank you. Gina Darcy from Palmdale, California. When I teach my dancers, I teach them the cupped over. Can I have your hand? Like this, when I'm doing wave so, movements. So it's, it's you have a balance. But you're not grasping thumbs and breaking. So fingers are bent phalanges. around the other person's palm, but but the thumb isn't free to be grabbed. And the heels of the hands. Together. Yeah, kind of heels of hand together. Yeah, all the heels of hands together. It's, it's interesting that square through works better hands up, and swing through, in some sense, works better hands down. And it's the opposite of the way we do it. The lady in the figured dress. Uh, there's a mica coming. Barbara Fuse in Alberta, Canada. Um, we have a lot of, we went through the controversy of the thumbs and the hands up and the hands down. And the thought was, well, because our dancers are older, it would be nicer to have the hands down. Um, our dancers seem to think better with the hands up. The lines don't get so far away. When the, when the arms are bent like this, the waves stay together. And if there is somebody unsure of where they're going, I mean, I have a fair amount of body mass that <clears throat> I shouldn't probably have, but if you're strung out here, I, I can't really win if you're going the wrong way, and you're more likely to take me the wrong way. I got you in here like this. I can lock arm against my side, and if I don't want to go, you ain't taking me. Mm -hmm. And also, with the hands down, um, I don't know about you, but there are some awfully strong men that get an arm or a thumb over, I don't care how much you teach thumbs down, thumbs are, they have a mind of their own. They're incredible. They want to just lock on and they're not going to let go. And um, lots of times you're going to go off and you're going to leave your thumb behind. And that hurts the guy that acquires your thumb as well as you that have lost your thumb. So if the hands are all up like this cupped, um, my husband and I had a real argument about the hands 
like this or like this. We compromise like this. <laughs> it wasn't my purpose to restart the hands up versus hands down debate. But yes, I, I think your point's well taken. I just wanted to bring up some of the the reasons that things happen. Gloria had a comment and then uh, he has. The thing that I saw, Barbara, when you were demonstrating uh, is something that we discussed at lunchtime when the three of us had lunch together so that we could sort of go over what we, how we were going to do this, uh, and that is that uh, when we talk about certain types of uh, hand, arm, or whatever holds, uh, the way you showed a forearm as reaching out was totally unlike a properly done forearm as defined in the forearm turn as in Alaman left, which we do use the forearm, uh, the most used used call probably in square dancing is done with the forearm. It is not to reach out. The arms are to be held in a natural way close to your body. Whereas it's exactly opposite in the description of the hands out. The elbows are away from the body. So in fact it truly is, if you're following the definitions that Collar Lab put out, it is truly exactly opposite from what you just said. The arms and the forearm should be held here. The arms for the uh, up palm cross palm should be here if you look back in your definitions you'll see that's correct so we had a discussion a little bit about the wrong types of handholds that are referred to as hands up and forearms or uh, cups and thumbs or no thumbs in other words there's a big difference among all of us I'm sure if we listen to every person sitting in the room we would probably find that you have different ways and we're doing different ways too Larry and then yeah, Larry Davenport, Foster City, California. The one thing I was going to comment on is is what what comes after the swing through. I mean, whether the hands up or the hands down feels more comfortable in the swing through. There's always also the issue of which one's easier to disengage from. I know an awful lot of dancers uh, adjust True. to a many a many things, but they, mm -hmm. when I'm dancing hands down, it seems like there's a little extra fighting for where we're going if it's a pass through or something else. Okay, Paul, and then let's get off the topic of hands up versus hands down. No, I don't. I'd like to reverse to the awkwardness of the square through. My own idea is that if they were dancing by definition, the feet are doing the square through for you. Pass through, quarter in. Pass through, quarter in. Since your feet are creating the body motion, the hand shouldn't be a problem. But it's, it's, it's not pass through. There's really a hand action involved. And the, and the second one to left. In, anywho, pull by, onward through the fog. <laughs> the next observation is a combination of Cal and some other folks. You should have a seat for a moment at least. We will probably have other <laughs> other examples. Um, Cal made an interesting point about the old set pattern dances, which was that if you followed one, looked down from on high and followed w one dancer through that path, it looked like a relatively smooth doodle on paper. It was not a star, it wasn't a square, it wasn't some simple jagged figure. It was something that you would get by moving your hand smoothly. And that the smoothness of that figure reflects the smoothness with which the people did what they did. Uh, somebody else built on that by pointing out that dancers adapt. If you look at some of the old set pattern pieces and analyze them in, in light of today's body flow, some of them are pretty atrocious. But what happened is the dancers knew what was coming, and they made the allowances for I know what's coming next, so I throw my hip out here so I can head off that way, or whatever it took to make it smooth. With the demise of set pattern pieces, and the, and the rise of extemporaneous calling, a lot of that smoothness disappeared. And if, if the smoothness that that had is to be recovered, the site caller has to take on himself the planning for the dancers so that their anticipation of what's coming next will carry them in a way that feels smooth. I think the corollary that's become off of that then is that that site calling has invented some set pattern pieces. It, but the, the, the 
master they're attempting to serve in it is where it maneuvers the dancers next and what it does for the resolving of the square and not necessarily for the danceability of those parts. In other words, we come up with set patterns of calls that follow the next call simply because we know that those two together then make a unit that works well together that allows us to keep the dancers moving so that we eventually have a square to resolve with. So we're just serving another master, and we're still not ever really achieving the doodling that really needs to be danceable. And in fact, at lunch, I came up with a corollary to your, your statement about doodling, and that is that if you can track, the idea of doodling was tracking, say, the number one gym and following his actions around the square. And if you connected all those dots, that suddenly you found this really attractive doodle on the piece of paper. My corollary is that if you can find a set geometric pattern, then you're not dancing them. If you can identify the formation, that, that, that doodle as a circle or a square or a diamond or whatever, then what you really haven't done, you really haven't danced the dancer is that all they've done is stayed in this set geometric metric pattern. If, if, for instance, I have a guy on the end facing in of, of a two-faced line, and I have him or on the end facing out, and I have him circulate, and then ac do c and then trade, all I've done is create, and let's go ahead, and you're on the end facing out, John. Okay, so if we have him do an all eight circulate to the other end, and then ac do c where he circulates again, and then trade, ends trade, all I'm doing is, and then do an all the way eight circulate. All I've done is circled him, and you found a set geometric pattern, but that's, you know, he won't notice it that much because he's farther away from the center of the square, but at the same time, it wasn't that dancing doodle that could have been a very comfortable routine of wandering around through the square. And I, I think when you find that, that if you have set geometric patterns, you're running them through drill work and not through a dancing atmosphere. Depends on the set geometric pattern. In other words, if you're going in, and for instance, the cloverleaf pattern that people seem to like. If you're doing a cloverleaf pattern, then you're changing directions and doing things that would form a very nice doodle. If you're doing what you were doing here and just have the circle pattern and you did nothing but circle patterns all night long, then I would say that probably you are doing the geometric pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's a difference. Let me tell you a little bit about where this doodle came from. Uh, we, we grew up training underneath Mrs. Shaw, Dorothy Shaw, Pappy Shaw's wife. And she used to produce a syllabus every year that had a doodle on the front of it that was a specific uh, figure or pattern. And her whole idea was that you must view everything from above, and if it didn't look like a pretty good doodle, you might want to take a look at your choreography. This particular combination that you had would be nothing but four circles that were interlocking for the men and another four circles that it was interlocking for the ladies. If that's all there was, and that's the only pattern that you produce, that would certainly be true. I've gone to several dances where I never get away from my corner. We've all done this. Are you one of the callers that call this way? If you are, then you need to take a look at your choreography and say to yourself, well, what I need to do is change what is happening on the floor so that I get away from my, my corner and I produce an overall pattern. You know, the, one of the things that bothers me a little bit about modern choreography, it all involves you and somebody in front of you and somebody beside you and heck with, with the fourth person where what we really need to do is start in, uh, working on choreography that involves a team of eight people and the interactions among all eight. I'm going to build on that, if I may. If you look at the PLUS program, well, in the beginning in mainstream, there's spin chain through, and that was popular for a number of years. In PLUS, there is spin chain the gears, and then... Lately, there's been chain and exchange the gears, which is much more in the mold of eight people working together and it being a long, smooth pattern. And we look at which one seems to be the most commonly used today. And it's been chain and exchange the gears, which is the hardest to describe and the hardest to teach well. But by golly, it dances the best. And it looks beautiful from above. Um, I'm going to build now to the next point that I think we came up with, which is that people expect certain body flow, and just dancing along. If you're moving more or less straightforward, you sort of expect to weave, as in weave the ring. 
You don't expect to walk straight. You don't expect to walk a, in a straight line on an angle. If you have moved me to the left, I'm going to expect you to move me to the right. If you have just had me do something with my right hand, I'm going to expect you to do something with my left hand. And dancers, based on their expectations, set their bodies so that they're prepared for what they expect is coming. And to the extent that you can, as an extemporaneous caller, take advantage of that expectation, you'll get the flow that I think Cal and the rest of us would like. And to the extent that you violate those expectations, you're going to get stuff that feels bad and has people making rapid adjusts. Do you have a... I, I would like to see a total square because I have a feeling we have some less than five-year callers in the room that maybe don't really understand what you were doing when you were down there because they could not visualize the rest of the square. And I'm not going to ask if that's true. I'm going to request that we have a whole square with John in the same position he was in. So could we have a whole square? And let us exactly demonstrate. You know that what he was doing led him in a circle. That's no question. You were over here, John. John, you were over here facing me. There we go. And we're going to be in a, uh, if... All right, did you want a two-phase line? Or, or see, my mind was not even thinking two-phase line. It was uh, parallel, uh, parallel ocean waves. Isn't that funny? Okay. So they're now in a two-phase line, and John is on the end of one couple facing out of the um, square. And now the call would have been... Go ahead, John. Uh, all right, I'll say it. Stop and make the point. You'll see it better if you stand up or get up on the stage yes. if you want to see it. All right. I if you think have an interest in seeing it from above, feel free to get up. Yeah, if you want to stand up or anything, go ahead. All right, go ahead, John. Say the call. It was... Okay. No. So is all eight circulating? A seducing? Keep watching, John. Same sex as trade? Keep watching, All eight circulating? Notice that the, the pattern for the girls was even worse. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. And, Actually, and I wanted you to move just John, uh, you oh. know, just the men on the ends, because that's what he was demonstrating for. But yeah. it but, served but as well. You yeah. noticed that that there was not, there was just a very straight geometric pattern there, and there wasn't any real action of doodling, which which is what Cal talked about. You want to try to show the doodling action and send John through one of those, or? All right. Let's get into let's get into a um, uh, notion wave. Hmm? All right. One of one of the one of the pattern. One of the things that, that's interesting to me is that we tend to string long things of basics together and give them a name. Uh, spin chain the gears obviously is the epitome of this sort of thing. And I think dancers like it. There's a, there's no caller that since died in, in New Zealand by the name of Lex Dowling. And Lex Dowling's theory is that mainstream dancers uh, tends to cater to people that like very short reaction times and very short figures. And the reason we have plus is because we have a large proportion of the dancers that want to know what's coming for the next four or five counts. Okay, does that make sense? Because they can anticipate the flow and do the compensations if they need to do it and have time to recover before they think of this. Okay, cast off three quarters. Sinners trade. Cast off three quarters. Sinners trade. Okay, see what you're doing here. You're, you're creating a doodle in which people are moving around the floor in a pattern. And in this case, the pattern is on the outside of the set. And if you would draw the picture from this from above, but it's a kind of a pleasant move. If somebody had been around uh, you know, a number of years ago, they would have said, gee, that looks neat. I think I'll call that walks the wheel. Uh, just, just a second. If... Uh, could you, we move the rest of the square out? John, go back to your spot and dance the action that John, that, that Cal just put you through. Sure. Just let him dance it by himself. The rest of the square get out of the way. Okay? Watch John's body movement. Okay. So it was to cast off three cast quarters. Cast off three quarters. Okay, now Center's he's changing direction. Center's trade. Mm -hmm. changing You're changing okay. lean. Cast off three quarters. And, Sinner's trained. Yeah. And so you saw, now he was inactive on the last part of the call, too. But yeah. you notice that John had a doodling routine that went through there that wasn't just one straight geometric pattern. Right. And the other thing, if you notice, he was talking about the fact 
that you could anticipate what the body was going to do next. And I think this becomes very important to dancers to be able to have some sort of a feel that what I'm going to do next is natural for me to do. And when we interrupt this feel, then there's a whoops sort of feeling. The whoops sort of feeling is all right once in a while. If we whoops them all night, they're going to go home and have aching muscles in the morning. All righty. It's time for a transition. Let's look at a bunch of call sequences. And for this, actually, if we could get a square back up again, you'll, you'll see and... I'm going to call some things, some of them will be good, some of them you're not going to think so highly of. Um, and then the learned commentators will learnedly commentate upon why it was that you think it stunk. Right. Okay, let's have the heads lead to the right, slide through with the outside pair. Okay, the sequence is pass through, chase right. Go ahead, pass through, chase right. That's pretty common. There's a funny spot in it. Yes, the ladies. What was so? The Jerry correctly identified that, that something funny happened to the ladies. Yeah, it, it, well, the outfacing bell in particular. Yes. There's this sudden, I have to do almost a U-turn back to head off. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a stop start as you change direction because it's, it's something, it's a turn that's so tight that you, that you can't, almost can't do it smoothly. Except that if you know it's coming, you'll do something about it by pushing off. Sure. Uh, let's have the men run right. Pass through, chase right. You bet. And, and did you notice what the women did to compensate? They pushed the foot forward to stop their momentum forward and then made their turning action. And, and so they problem solved. And every dancer that successfully have done this, because we know that it's called all the time, have come up with their solution patterns to do this. And the ones that fail never solve this problem. And they're the ones that break down on that action. And, and we have a number of these things that occur constantly that successful dancers have solved the problem. We've never taken it the next step to help the dancers that didn't solve it on their own to solve it themselves. Michael, just here's Mike. Before he says something, did you notice that she made the comment? What did she say, Judy? Right after she finished that, she said, oh, but we're used to it. We're used to it. She's one of the ones that has done exactly this. Now, it's interesting. interesting. I'm Michael McMullen from Portland, Oregon. I watched Jerry. She did a very tight to the right U-turn back and then two box circulates, which is the more technical definition. But if you look at the definition, it's a very descriptive. The right-hand dancer does an exaggerated zoom. So for the girl, she would not, or the person that's being the chasee, shouldn't be doing a tight U-turn back, but letting the body loop out except that there's no good way to do that. Be but it flows a bit more if you're making this big loop as opposed to the tight loop. But the definition states, the definition states an exaggerated, there are two ways to exaggerate something. One is a big way, and that's the way you took that definition to mean. The other way is to cut it short. That's also exaggerating, and she did it, in the, uh, and that's the way you should interpret that definition. Plus, there's also the physical reality of this given setup, and that is that for the outside person, there's no problem in doing that. For the inside person, they're thrust with the problem of being adjacent to another box of four they're functioning with. And, and so that's all of these theories always have to face reality. Reality is, is how tight a square is, what the formation is that people are working with. As an example, um, boys run around the girls, and everybody slide through. Okay? If, if imagine all the women here in full square dance regalia with the petticoats do a right and left through and everybody roll away. For the, even without the reality of the petticoats being in existence here, they had a problem coming across there. 
if you add the fact of the physical reality of what a normal spread dance floor looks like with the petticoats on, suddenly it makes it impossible for the women to pass through comfortably. And for the center couples, it's even harder because there is no leeway in the center for them to back to. The outside gent could at least back away into space to allow the girl to comfortably pass, but the gentlemen in the center have no luxury of that. Okay. Jeanette Stoible, <clears throat> Switzerland. Just one comment. We in Europe often used to call half sachet. And mm -hmm. I think after courtesy turn, it's much more nicer to dance, and even then you have the space to dance it. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just to try something here, you're in an eight chain through formation. Would you pass through, turn to face your partner? Pass through and chase right. I cheated. I yeah. put, I put Michael in the place where he had to make the tight U turn back. <laughs> and did you notice what Bruce did here? Bruce took one step forward, rocked in, a, in essence, rocked forward, did his turn back, and went straight ahead. That was his accomplishment of changing the direction. In round dancing, there are constant changes of directions going on. There are checks, there are basketball turns, there are all kinds of different ways of changing direction. We don't instruct square dancers on how to change direction. We just simply let them struggle with it. Some that are natural dancers solve the problem effectively. Others are always lost on particular calls. And so ultimately then, their problem in learning it is not caused by their inability to learn how to dance. It's our inability to instruct. So there. Do a, do a walk and dodge and a partner trade. And in the course of getting out of that one, I just demonstrated another one. Very common. Very common one where there is a direct body flow reversal for somebody that if you didn't know it was coming, it would cause you to topple the wrong way because your feet would be in the wrong place to stop you. It's the lady and the normal. Um, if the caller uses his music and gives the dancers enough lead time, then yeah. if he's cueing on the beat, it's impossible to dance comfortably. If the caller cues a beat or a beat and a half ahead of when he wants the ladies to do something really awkward because yeah. we seem to be the ones that are the fall guys in the awkward well, of department. Um, then we got a fighting chance to get around skirts or no skirts. Mm -hmm. Did you notice what Jerry did though on, on the action? Um, everybody passed the ocean. Hinge, walk and dodge, partner trade. You notice that there was the rock recover action that's part of a basketball turn. That is a very natural re reaction around dancing, but we don't problem solve. We don't give the dancers enough information to be able to learn how to function on these things. We don't teach defensive dancing. We, we, we don't allow them to be able to be successful in handling choreographic situations that commonly occur. We can try, we've tried for such a long time to legislate these, in effect, out of existence. We tell everybody and we clobber them in callers clinics all over the place that this is bad choreography. But at the last plus dance, you danced, or you nice mainstream dance. You heard these. You know you have. And, and part of that is the reality of the site calling thrust of callers trying to survive by getting themselves back into standard lines. And that's one methodology that occurs there. So they know that they can get back to standard lines using this procedure. And so to face the reality, we need to teach the dancers how to problem solve this situation so it becomes danceable for all of them and not just the ones that learned how to do it themselves. Rich has a comment and then I'm going to move on to another example. Well, I just, I remember reading, this is Rich from Hayward, California. I read in John's book, The Big Five, that walk and dodge doesn't have any calls that flow well after it. That's yet practically still true. Used. <laughs> so what could you recommend is the best use of a call after walk and dodge? Uh, she has a comment, and then Mike has one. Just have two ways. <clears throat> the walk is through the fold, or the walk is through the trade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you notice in this morning's exhibition by the team group how flowing everything looked until the command walk and dodge occurred? 
you know, every other AC display looked, looked really good, particularly in the kaleidoscope with all the action going on. And the only thing that was ever totally disruptive, other than the California tour that cured some different things, was the walk and dodge. Everything is a dancing action came to a stop. Now, square dancing is a unique combination of the dance flow, the intellectual aspect, the social aspect. So. You know, we can't always look at everything being wind in your face choreography. I think there, there needs to be some puzzle, but it's like having a meal entirely of oregano. You want the spice to be there selectively and not so much noticed all the time as opposed to being the predominant thing that goes on. And, and so the walk and dodge just stood out like a sore thumb out there this morning. It was a disruptive little hiccup. It got people maneuvered. It did different things. And so maybe that's what the benefit of walk and dodge is. But as far as it participating in winning your face choreography, it ain't there. Mm -hmm. Pass the ocean, ladies trade, and recycle. <laughs> well, uh, step to an ocean wave right here. When we just step to an ocean wave, there's no uh, styling, or in fact, it's not even in our definition under styling, for um, when we pass the, pass the ocean, when we pass the ocean, to have the girls or the center people do a left quarter turn. But in effect, they were doing a left quarter turn without any handhold when they did their pass the ocean, then a trade, which was a half of a left, uh, I mean, was a left arm turn, half, and then an abrupt 360, and yet, in to the right, yes, in the opposite direction, and in sets in order. I mean, it's what American Square Dance, and on um, our Collar Lab printout to on the emphasis quarterlies of uh, recycle. That was one of the figures that was given, and I was horrified when I saw it because back off again and uh, undo your ocean wave. Of course, this will make it even harder, but past the ocean send a girls trade and recycle she does a yeah. nice recycle did, did you she? notice what happened on yeah. this side yeah. there was an action that was late completing because the girls were acting independently of the guys they were working with on this side the recycle got completed very well because the women pushed off hard then grabbed yeah. just like at the end of a swing when they counterbalance against their partner to, to find their own position again when they grabbed again then they were able to find the position quickly and effectively and contact. This is where with the hands up it's much easier to give that little push rather than if you had your hand down at your sides. If you have your hands up and cross palms, it you give that little push and it just works. Here speaks a lady with a carpal tunnel. <laughs> do, do what, what Bill, what's your comment? Sure. Yeah. My comment was that microphone please. Yeah, in, in this recycle, it, it uh, is intended to be a non-hands movement. When the ladies is there, the men have always been strong enough to push them, make them follow, make them do what? You get four men together or get the ladies on the end and start a recycle with the ladies on the end of an ocean wave, what, and what, uh, you're in trouble. This? Do a right and left through. Hang on. Uh, right and left through. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back. Roll away. Nor have sachets. Pass the ocean. Guys trade. Recycle. <laughs> and there's a case where, on average, the ladies were outmasked by the guys and couldn't provide the support. <laughs> I think it helps tremendously whoever's doing the recycle to give a little push to get them go, going around. And when they don't, you, you have to make up all that momentum on yourself. The end answer to actually end, give an assisting push. Yes. The problem with some of these problem-solving situations here, though, is that in the heat of battle, it's hard to come up with the definition, execute, and then also strategy solve the situation that, oh, this isn't normal, I need to hit and push and whatever. Now, if it's done enough and repeated enough, then you come up with a strategy to solve it. But given the number of calls and combinations and the thrust that we're doing things, it's hard to always find successful problems, ways of solving it, or to get good enough at it to apply it all the time. If you don't get a problem often enough, you're always going to be rusty solving it. Oh, yes. 
Okay, a question for the panel. Uh, if we take a look at the definition for recycle, what you're doing is not what defined. What is defined mm, no. is a fold, follow, cro mm -hmm. you know, cross fold, and the, the, the center person's action is fold, to follow, and face. Right, and it can't be done comfortably without a hand done. assist. With, 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 yeah, it can't be done with a, without a hand assist. With a hand assist, right. right. And so if we're going to adopt this as being the standard, then we're going to have to redefine what a recycle is. Quite possibly. It has some amazing repercussions, doesn't it? Well, I, it, it? It goes back to even defining pull by again. It is that that pull by should not have pulls? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mm, exactly. I will say this: that I, I had a chance to do a school with a Steve Cotman, and of course, it's his dad who wrote the call recycle and uh, half sachet yourselves again, gang. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now, yes, yeah, step to an ocean wave. He informed me that it was originally written, that's where linear cycle came from, as we know, that came after, as a hinge, outfacers fold, half tag, and roll the way you turned when you did your half. Just a half tag, sir. Just a half tag, not, ro not peel off. We're not doing linear cycle. We're doing, come on over here. You had it in your mind. You anticipated. No, you guys did it right. Just the one gentleman had problem there. Turn around. Uh, trade with a girl. You have other right. You're uh, to where you were. Now face her. Make an ocean wave. All right. Now he told me that his father wrote it this way: a hinge, out facers fold, a half tag. Go ahead, sir. You did it right. And then turn, turn to face there. That's the way he said it was written, and I thought, you know, that's the first time and the only time. Then I mentioned it in a group of callers the other night, and they said, absolutely, that's not the way it was written. And I thought, well, damn it, the sun told... I mean, pardon me, no profanity. <laughs> Scott, well, we know Scott where it came from, take we? that off the tape. <laughs> I think it would have been a good way. I think it's a good time for Jerry to talk, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. All right, George, you know what to do. I just want to get back to the, I just thought about walk and dodge and the combination of walk and dodge, chase right, and the plus program. When you have that, you have the gals compensating for walk and dodge and then going the other way for the chase right. So it's, it's really a problem there. Slide through. <laughs> do a right and left through, Dixie style to a wave, and do a left swing through. Ugh. How do you know it's coming, though? I violated something there. Andy? Yeah. I violated your expected hand use. It, it wasn't a double hand use where the hand was unavailable, but you expected to change hands in the middle and go some other direction, guys. Who found it honestly uncomfortable? Yeah, he he called it well. I think yeah, that that is a really good statement. Um, that that expecting the problem to occur by clipping it close to the other call. I mean, in essence, he clipped time, but it was a positive effect in in letting the dancers dance the whole unit together. Shall I try it the wrong way? Yes. <laughs> Okay, single hinge and the ladies run around a guy. Do a right and left through. The ladies lead, go Dixie style to an ocean wave. Left, swing through. Some kind. Yeah. Right, trade the wave. Men run, bend the line. Do a right and left through. Dixie style to a wave. And fan the top. Now, fan the top from there is normally a very hard thing to do, but it's not a normal place for the guys to do it from. And yet, because it was expected body flow, the right thing happened. 
I, I do want to point out too that this group of dancers is an exceptional group exactly. of Dixie style tool wavers. That's what you notice many times is the lack of the man sliding over to the spot so that his action is just a left touch quarter type. What normally happens many times on the floor is the guy that stayed in position, and thus his action is a left three-quarter turn. And now, when you then compensate that with another left swing through, we're suddenly thrust into turning five quarters. Why don't you do it again unless have Andy dance it wrong? Okay. Ex yeah. Explode the wave. Good. Uh, face in. Do a right and left through. Watch Andy. Send the ladies Dixie style to a wave. Plant it, Andy, and then that left swing through. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was a nice break there too. Now, so what happened was that suddenly Andy was turning five quarters. And, and the reality is is that many dancers dance it ineffectively. Male dancers dance it ineffectively. They, they, do, they depend upon their body weight to swing themselves counterbalancing against a girl who doesn't have the same mass and thus she's being thrown artificially forward on the, on the Dixie style to wave action as he tries to compensate for being in the wrong place. Can I back off one bit? Uh, step through, everybody. Step through. Do you turn back? Star through for me. Okay. Now, uh, the call itself, and you should all understand this, the call Dixie style to an ocean wave, the way it inherently is created and constructed is poor. Because as the, if when we have whoever goes into the middle, let's have the girls start the Dixie style. Stop there. You know we're supposed to be single file. And you know that we, I should think that most of you would know that we usually precede this with something like a ladies chain or a right left through to flow them in so they can bring the girl in front. Now, when the man uh, is courtesy turning a girl, let's have the ladies chain across. Go ahead, chain across. Now, when the man is turning the girl and putting her in the lead for a Dixie style, his, uh, I'm not saying it fast enough, girls chain back. And get ready, put her in. Notice the man's action is to his left, but in effect, to make it work, he has to move to his right. His body flow is to the left on a courtesy turn. It always is, always will be. So the call itself is poorly constructed, and that's why you see so many men going the wrong way and getting caught out there when they're new dancers. You know how they do that. And, and the successful person over here used his partner's body weight to throw to him over to finally get to the correct spot to function the call. Um, let's do um, trade the wave, please. Okay. Um, should I go from the other way? Linear cycle. <laughs> oh, well, good. Do a right and left through and send the ladies Dixie style to a wave. And with that wraparound arm from the courtesy turn, he used that engagement to help pull himself over to swing very easily into the, the left-hand wave there. But, you know, again, he's using his partner's motion, not his own body's motion, to get the correct spot. Mm -hmm. Knowing having that call ready, the follow-up call ready, was very important for me in executing that call. So having the follow-up call there uh, far enough ahead that you could plan yeah, call the two do that. There, there was a weight driver singing call in a rhythm, um, um, it's all right with me. And he uses the Dixie style and the wave into the trade the wave for the, the corner swing. But you'll notice it's one of the few times that Wade actually trips over the phrasing and to try to force the action of the Dixie style to wave quickly enough so that it's smooth enough to dance. I mean, he was aware of the problem in constructing the singing call, but if you listen to him on the backside, you'll find that he's really forcing the phrasing just so he can overcome this problem. I've got one more example I want to play with. Uh, hmm, explode the wave. Uh, do a wheel and deal. Let's have the center slide through just for a second. Pause, 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 pause. The center star through and a zoom. Lovely, wasn't it? He didn't even do the zoom. <laughs> Cheater. You, you, notice that, you notice that Bruce substituted instead of zooming. Is that how you'd actually dance that? I mean, it's a fairly common. Yeah, that's not criticism. I mean, that's yeah. that three quarters of the floor would have done that. You know, yeah. An so. experienced dancer might have, an inexperienced dancer would have tried to do it. So, in effect, you did substitute the old non turning back up around, which is a reasonable way of dealing with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, right. That, that's right. fine. That is exactly right. Centers, centers pass through, slide through, pass through, do a wheel and deal. And a zoom. Okay, you 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 almost did the same thing. 
Yeah. The lady but was was the flow better for the Wheel and Deal to the Zoom than the Star Through to the Zoom? Okay, so you think Zoom sings anyway. Uh, does Andy have an opinion as to the the difference, or Mike Mike has an opinion? Um, I, I think dancers, it, it, Wheel and Deal and Zoom, you, ha you, you can give more lead time that dancers can anticipate it and can, can start moving apart rather than letting the momentum of the Wheel and Deal get them sort of going you, together. You've also got a low handhold that you can give a little push off. A little push off with, right. Which helps. Whereas after, a, after a star through... You you want to hang on because you think you're going to want to be together at, in the next call typically. Yeah, you're trying uh, you're trying to keep yourself from falling out after the turn on the start right, there. Right. But have you noticed that there's been one overriding comment through all this, and that is that it, it's letting the dancers anticipate that you're going to go there, or they can compensate for it, or what? We're making them work our choreography. We're making them make it successful. It, it, that we're not necessarily going the right route here. If we're making it so much their responsibility to not only to respond to the calls we're coming up to solve, but also for dancing solutions, that we make it incumbent upon them to solve what we're placing out in front of them instead of us making sure that there's no other way to solve it. This brings up a point from the standpoint that there is a group of us now who feel that perhaps our rush and our emphasis on the fact that the dancers must be constantly surprised is not necessarily true. That the anticipation, you know, the surprise is not the element that the dancers are really looking for. That an anticipation is not bad. That they can anticipate what we're going to do next. That what they're really looking for is a little bit of unusualness in the choreography and the success in being able to execute that rather than surprise. Does that make sense? And so what we're really saying to ourselves is not that the dancers want to be constantly surprised by gimmicks, that they want to be able to have success. And part of the success is the ability to be able to anticipate what is coming next. Think about that, because that's different than what we've been talking about for the last five or six or seven years. It, it, to take it into the cooking analogy, it's, it's no... You don't want the, the thrill to be because that you, you, taste, you thought you were about to taste coleslaw and found out it was horseradish. What you want is, is to be able to taste the food and find that it exceeds your expectations. And I think that's a successful dance, is that it should exceed the dancer's expectations of what they were approaching in the square. Larry had a comment, if you can. Yeah, I was just going to say that I think the truth of what Cal just said is right in front of us. If you think about round dancing, there's no surprise there, but it's very popular. In, in fact, the problem in round dancing is execution and not surprise as a factor. How are we doing on time? Uh, 2.54. 2.54. We have six minutes. We question is, do you guys have any particular sequences you'd like to try comments or questions? Yeah, go. Here than there. I think when you have, when you can successfully anticipate a little bit, it makes it dancing. It's relaxing and it's dancing rather than always trying to, you know, solve a problem. I, I would like to have, oh. I would like to, excuse me, there's somebody ahead? Yes. That was just right. to get you started. You thinking. started, uh, Jeanette here, who is from uh, from uh, Switzerland, started the sequence that you, what you were talking about is a half sachet following the right and left through, but a standard half sachet? Follow through on that because I think it's a good move. Huh? In other words, a, a standard half sachet following a, a right and left? No, no. Uh, okay, okay. Centers do a right and left through. Half sachet. We often wonder what we can do with half sachet that's smooth. I mean, you know, this, this gets to a puzzle because it's a move that I miss with the end of the done. This is one of the nicest forms of a half sachet, and it solves the skirt problem. In other words, centers do a right left through. Watch what the ladies do if they do just a standard half sachet. Whoops, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm not watching. I'm thinking and not looking. All right. Yeah, all right. Nice now do it. Now. Do a right and left through, followed by a half sachet. 
Why do we always do roll away with a half sachet? Because it's all we got taught. Huh? Because it's all we got taught. All we got taught. Now, let me ask the ladies in the room. You know, you say you always get caught on the short end of the deal, and this is the one thing that Judy pointed out to me, that really roll away with a half sachet for a lot of the ladies is not a move that they enjoy very much. You enjoy it in the circle. But when you get into the other situations, ladies, do you really enjoy it? Okay, can you see how perhaps if we as callers... From studying, and I always have the male aspect would take in to the fact that the ladies would perhaps have a better motion, should perhaps use this more. Agreed. Further comments, questions? We were bringing up the question about recycle. We were just talking about recycle. How many of you like recycle? Okay. Let's demonstrate doing it the way we do it normally, the recycle. So you guys want to get them through a recycle and do it just the way you normally dance it. Okay. So we have right hand waves here and just recycle. <laughs> Swing you can through. tell where people come from. Some are doing it with hands and some are with not without. It makes a difference. Recycle. Now if you recycle. Touch a quarter. Center's trade. Recycle. Sweep a quarter. Reverse now recycle the is supposed to be done without hands. Yes. And it's comfortable that way, but if they do it and grab you and yank you around, how many do you like it that way? I don't like the shop. Here. I don't like this is Rich from Hayward again. I don't like the shove for the ends. I like the ends to have the pressure firm, ready, and let the girls do the shoving if they want. Maybe maybe start the hand moving a little bit to give them something, but not an actual shove. Is that you, or is that... <laughs> Must be. <laughs> it's the cold slot one. Um, yeah, I, I think what we're seeing, though, is that, that there's lots of different types of problem solving going on here, and, and no real one effective solution. But you do see one thing that's occurring. The reason I think the hands are occurring somewhere along the line is to solidify the ending position. And I'm not sure that, that recycle is maybe necessarily a mainstream call. Um, you know, it is one that has been used constantly at it, was really one of Color Lab's first contributions to what was actually being club level dancing at the time, and it was one that, that really became very popular. But I don't know if it's necessarily an easy call. It probably is one of the hardest calls we have on mainstream, and it involves a lot of problem solving on the dancer's part. And, and that's why we see so many different solutions to it, and, and I'm not sure that it's really an easy call, that it necessarily should even really be there. Uh, but we're stuck with the reality of it being there that dancers intrinsically know it and so recognize call part of the system. So I think we're kind of stuck with what exists. Agreed. I think. Uh, My comment, Les Hankel from T Tobias, Nebraska, and my comment is that recyclers probably has always been the worst taught call in mainstream. When it came out and, and went through the country by storm, it was not taught the way it was written by most people. And today it's not taught the way the formal definition is by most people. So if I can... She's from Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, one more comment. And then we Actually, we teach it. I teach it in Switzerland or Germany. So that I teach the ends have to do the cross fold. So before in the class, before I do recycle, they know cross fold, and the senders just do the fold and follow. So it's, I think it's a nice dance action. So, and if the ends know where they are, even if you hold hands or not, the senders come to the same place. And I noticed when you danced it, you truly did dance it that way. Didn't the rest of you notice that way? She actually made it look good. And that's the first time I've actually seen a recycle done even with my own wonderful teaching. I hate the way it. In fact, I don't use the term recycle because I take exception to the term. And I just say the dumb move, and they all do recycle. <laughs> all right. 
A quick wrap up, if I can, if I can hit the high points. Physics matters. It controls how things feel. Dancers will adapt if you use physics against them to try and make it feel comfortable. Dancers expect certain things, and if you play to those expectations, they will dance comfortably. If you play against them, they will be uncomfortable. And I think that's about the essence of how to make things feel good. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Gloria.